So today I've come to Aalborg and uh, one of the first things I want to do is go to Lindholm Hoy, which is behind me, you can see the sign. Uh, it's basically a Viking burial uh, ground that they discovered. It's one of the oldest known ones in the area, so I just want to check it out. And there's a little museum as well where I can maybe learn a bit about Viking history, so um, I'm looking forward to it. So we'll see if I can get there. I'm just going to try and look on the map first and uh, we'll get going. Now it's meant to be a lot sunnier today. Uh, so I don't know if my shoes are going to be as appropriate for uh, walking in uh, muddy grass, but uh, I'm going to do it anyway. So I don't know um, if it will make the edit or not, but I got catcalled when I was uh, trying to just film a little bit of uh, walking. So it's not just a British thing, <laughs> you can get catcalled in Denmark. I just had no idea what they were saying to me, they just sort of wolf whistled and uh, completely ruined my cut, but <laughs> never mind. I think it's just over there basically. I don't know if it's just me, but I find it a little bit eerie that um, there's a lot of crows sort of circling and building nests and places to rest uh, where the Viking burial ground is. I mean, I, I don't tend to see a lot of crows in big groups, especially making that much noise. I don't know if you can hear it, but I find it a little bit creepy. It's almost ominous. Look, look at this. We're going to actually see the uh, stone formations which mark where the uh, Vikings were buried a long time ago. Let's go! Noted by the mound of earth in the middle, flint stones on top, and a large circle. So here, an actual Viking warrior was cremated. So I'm at Lindholm Hoya, and uh, it feels a little bit eerie in a way to know that there was once a bustling Viking life here. It would have been a little city trade going on and this is just marks an area where people were buried, so like a graveyard, um, but they were cremated so they would form the rock uh, formations around the body and cremate them on top of it. And apparently it's because they didn't feel it was appropriate to bury people and let them be eaten by worms. Um, so to burn them would mean that they could get to the afterlife quicker. And uh, yeah, it's just uh, a bit bizarre to be standing here you knowing that so many uh, Vikings have been cremated. So I've had a good walk around and read all the information of the different areas of Linden Point, and uh, it's been really interesting. Um, I have spent a little bit of time here though, so I do think I need to get myself back into Alborg, get the bus, and uh, try and see some more of the city. I found 
this place just online. It's got a bit of a Viking feel to it. I thought I'd try out uh, the uh, Schmore Pod, which is the open faced rye bread sandwich, um, typically served with herring and akavits, which is brewed in Alborg, or at least it was until 2015. And now it's moved over to Norway. Um, I'm going to be trying the um, classic open faced herring sandwich and uh, got my uh, schnapps in a schnapps glass to go with it. But um, I'm going to wait till I have the herring sandwich first and uh, then I can chase it with my uh, tubal. But yeah, so that's what I'm here to do today. Here it is my open faced herring sandwich. I tried this. Uh, sauce um, at work the other day with some fish and it goes quite well it's like a pickly kind of flavour but um, I'll definitely be having that for herring I think and somewhere underneath there I think I have rye bread there it is I found the rye bread <laughs> get a bit of all the layers bon appetit I like it. It's all good. I can have good luck. I think the time has come to do my schnapps. And they say school, as in cheers. I'm not sure I'm going to enjoy this, but school. To it. It's not too bad. Um, I smell a lot more like aniseed, but um, doesn't taste as badly, which is good because I hate aniseed. Wait, I'm going to have some of my two borg to help wash it down. It's an odd pairing to have with a chunky fish sandwich, basically, so uh, carry on in the Danish fashion. I prepared the herrings. Well, I must have enjoyed it a little bit. As for the egg for bit, I don't think I'll be having another one. But I tried it. Just off now to another area which is very more about architecture. And the person that designed this building is um, the same person that designed the Sydney Opera House. So it's got a lot of um, history to it and apparently the architect who designed the Sydney Opera House, when he returned to um, Alborg, which is where he lived, he died shortly after. So, uh, a bit of history there for you. So yeah, let's see what this place is all about. I don't know if it's the schnapps or the weather, but I'm really enjoying Alborg. Um, yeah, I'm just feeling really happy, sort of wandering around and doing things by myself, but also being able to try and let some people see what it's all about. Yeah, loving life right now. So I'm here basically in the centre um, for architecture and it's been really interesting walking around and looking at all these kinds of different models and it's not just about it being pretty there's been some video instructions in the background that i've been trying to watch and uh, basically what i've come to realize is that the danish architecture isn't just about designing things to look pretty it's about it's accommodating for a person's way of being and um, they use the um, comparison that if malls and supermarkets are designed to try and make people spend more money and more time there then why can't we design hospitals and other buildings and homes with the purpose of serving people and to make them feel like it's serving their needs in a way. It seems like an odd concept but actually it is visually pleasing to look at some of the designs of these buildings and uh, all of these little models are buildings that you can find in Denmark somewhere. I'm not really much into architecture before this, but it does seem to make sense. And instead of us having a building, just being a building, it can be functional, but also maybe help us feel more at ease and make us feel comfortable. Uh, I think that's brilliant. It's quite interesting. I think I'm gonna pay a lot more attention to Danish buildings now for the rest of my time here. So I'm glad I've come here. It's kind of opened my eyes a little bit to 
why Danish architecture is sort of spoken about um, and why it's thought highly of by architects and design. So yeah, it's been very interesting. this video don't forget to like comment and share below you can also subscribe by clicking the pinpoints like on the screen now or you can watch any of my other videos thanks for watching